Welcome back again and let's just jump into adding the area lamps. So the reason we've added a sun lamp to our scene was trying to improve the shadow situation around the area here. The reason you might consider adding the area lamps to your scene were well, there are actually a couple of them. First off, I will show it to you on a separate reference. In a scene like this, for example, there is always some kind of light and shadow situation happening around the window openings. So in this interior, for example, even though we don't have, we don't seem to have a direct sunlight coming into the interior that casts this very distinguishable shadows and lights, we still have, let's say, this kind of situations. Let's see it around the stairs here as well. Obviously, in architectural photography, this is all um, quite often caused by the uh, artificial light sources placed there around the scene by the photographer. But this is exactly what I'm talking about. We have this shadowed area here and this nice bright area here. So the general simple environment setup very rarely generates this effect nicely and we might need to add an area lamp to improve that. So let's do it in our scene. You can see it also here kind of and also here around this table. This is definitely not caused by the sun or anything, might be caused by those spot lamps here. But this area here as well, for example, or this area here, those little shadows, these are the details you, again, similar as we talked with the window modeling, these are the details you don't see if there are present in the scene, but if they aren't, you will know there's something wrong, you will know there's something artificial happening. So yeah, let's see how we can apply this great knowledge to our scene. So the process of adding area lamps is quite similar to adding a sun lamp. I'll just press Shift A, go to the light and select area. So again, by default, the lamp is created around the scene center. So I will move it here and rotate it by 90 degrees. So it points directly to our interior. The light settings are located exactly the same area here. So third icon from the bottom. And you can see we can play around with the size of the lamp. Let's increase it to, let's say, five. I'm going to switch to the top view and rotate the lamp so it faces, so it points more or less to our interior as the windows we have here. I'm going to move it upwards just a little bit. You can see having the normal transformation orientation also helps us uh, moving those area lamps around. So we have those gizmo handles aligned to the rotation. Let's give it like this. And let's now see what's the effect. So if we increase the region, there isn't actually much happening. And the, that might be because in difference to other light sources, we might need to use much higher strength values for the area lamps. And to be honest with you, I'm not super sure why does it work like that in Blender. But as you can see, as I increase the energy strength for this lamp, we also lose the shadows here. So setting up the illumination in general is trying to find a balance between different light sources. Let me hide this object here for now so I can see if this area looks good enough or maybe I should change something. Let's decrease the energy of this lamp so we have, have this shadow situation improved, I think. We can see there is um, 
still a lot of shadow visible from the sun lamp. If we hide the sun lamp right now, I think we can also see some shadows visible just from the environment itself. And if I change the environment strength to zero, I can now also see if there is any shadows, uh, if there are any shadows visible from the area lamp. So let's still increase its strength a little bit and increase the size maybe. It's similar to as with the sun lamp, so the smaller the size, the more distinguishable are the shadows. So we might go back and forth with those, both with sun lamp and the area lamp, trying to fine tune the setup till we're satisfied with how it looks. So after playing around the scene just for a few minutes, this is more or less the effect I was able to achieve. So it's still not perfect in terms of shadows here, especially when we compare it to the reference, but that's quite hard to achieve, to be honest. And I'm still sure it's possible if we added additional area lamps somewhere maybe around the kitchen, but we always need to find a balance between the level of realism we want to achieve and the render times that will come up later. So as long as we have those very nice shadowy details like here, for example, or around our dining furnishings here, I think we are really good to go with another area lamp. And the next area lamp will be the one to illuminate this foreground here just a little bit, because I think, yeah, it's just a bit too dark if we compare it to the reference, there could be, perhaps for this picture, it was just a camera flash or a very diffused fading light standing somewhere behind the photographer. So we will try to reproduce this effect, adding one more lamp. So the steps are exactly the same. I'm just gonna press Shift A, select an area lamp. I can already see it's within our interior somewhere. So let's move it to this room area here in the back. I just quickly rotated the lamp. Let's try to find it. Where is it actually? Okay, we need to obviously enable the overlays. So this is the lamp position. I'm gonna switch to global coordinate just to know better what's happening. Let's increase its size to one and a half meter maybe and do a very quick preview to see if it affects the scene at all. Well, it obviously does, as you can see. So we, I think we are getting a little bit too much light right now. If I go with the strength to zero, this is the before and this is the after effect. Let's maybe decrease it to 50. Perhaps it's a little bit too flat, so maybe 75. I think this should do the trick. We can also move this lamp back and forth to yeah, change the look. So it's really up to you at this point. One cool tip I think that can be said about the area lamps, if you use a very small size, like literally 0.05, and at a very high strengths, even I think we might even go lower than that. This now works as a photo camera flash. You just need to find the right energy. But if you move the light source somewhere around the camera, you can see it kind of looks like you were using a flash. So you have those very sharp shadows cast from your standing position, but we don't want this in our scene. So let's go back, set up the default settings, decrease the energy. Yeah. And I think this is more or less what we are looking for. So at this point, I would say we are done 
with the illumination setup. We'll obviously get back to it later when fine tuning the rendering, fine tuning the materials, because all of the other aspects of this rendering will be visible when setting up the shaders. So I want to thank you for watching at this point and see you in the material setup. By the way, please remember to keep your scene nice and tidy. So let's just create the lamps collection, move all of our lamps here and drop it to the helpers uh, main mother collection, let's say. <laughs> so let's remember about disabling booleans and all everything else for rendering, leaving the lamps available. So thank you for watching again and see you in the next part. Thank you guys for watching. This video is part of my interior visualization course in Blender, which you can watch for free on YouTube. All the necessary details and link to the full playlist can be found in the video description. If you want to support what I do and access all of the 3D files used in this course, plus Blender ready interior setups and over 2000 Blender exclusive 3D models, just visit the Chocofruit store and learn more about our subscription plans. Again, thanks for watching and I see you soon.